Yesterday, we were at 132nd Street and Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, and we renamed that street between 7th Adam Powell Boulevard and Malcolm X Boulevard, Leonard Harper Way. That was in memory of uh, Grant Harper Reed's uh, grandfather, who was a great, great producer of rhythm shows here in the Harlem community. Leonard Harper was a pioneer. Leonard Harper was famous for his floor shows in Harlem and down on Times Square and his colored musical comedies uptown at the Lafayette Theater and downtown on Broadway. He also had a dance, stu dance studio on, in the Times Square area where he trained the Marx Brothers, the Busby Berkeley dancers, and also Fred Astaire brought his sister Adele Astaire to come in because they wanted to learn how to put a little something extra in the butt department. And he taught them how to dance with soul. He had the Harperettes. And they were the most famous dance team ever. And they also danced at the Apollo Theater when he started to, uh, became the in-house producer at the Apollo Theater. He worked at Connie's Inn. He opened up the Cotton Club. When uh, Jack Johnson, the prize fighter, could not uh, keep, keep it going, it was called the Cafe Deluxe. And the gangsters took it over and called it the Cotton Club. But his main place was Connie's Inn, the famous Connie's Inn on Harlem. That's where he produced his many floor shows, like thousands. And they traveled all over the country uh, because he made a deal with Frank Schiffman. And they went to, after he mounted his productions at Connie's Inn, it would go to the Lafayette Theater. And then it would go to theaters all over the, all over the country for black entertainment. 132nd Street was where they mounted the first all-black talkie movie called The Exile with Oscar Micheaux out of the Lafayette Theater building. Frank Schiffman was the president of, of, the, of uh, Oscar Micheaux's company and they wanted to use, Oscar Micheaux was trying for years to get my grandfather to get involved with his film productions because he figured that my grandfather could bring in all the black talent because my grandfather worked with Lena Horne, Billie Holiday, Cab Calloway, Louis Armstrong, and Duke Ellington lived in his house, in his apartment on 123rd Street and 7th Avenue. And my grandfather gave him his first jobs uh, playing the piano at the rehearsals of Connie's Inn. And um, he also got him his first big gig at the Hollywood Inn downtown before Duke Ellington became the in-house orchestrator for the, co uh, the Cotton Club. My grandfather started out as a pickaninny in Alabama. They were, him and his brother were like poor boys. His father was a performer that made extra money performing and they got a lot of that from him. My grandfather's early influence, he was a Baptist. His mother took him and his brother to the Baptist church. There was a lot of singing and dancing, but his voice changed as he got a little older. So the main thing he was doing was dancing. And they were pickaninnies. They were little boys that would dance for the white people for pennies. But they found that he had a certain talent, a certain rhythm in his step. And so some of the old timers took him and taught him how to be a, a great medicine show dancer. Then he went on, on tour, some people took him up. He had various companies as a, as a youth that he went into. But the main thing that happened was he went to Chicago and he, got, he had a name for himself. And then he met his wife, Osceola Blanks, and they performed they did a show in, in the Lafayette Theater in Harlem in 1921 and 22. And they were picked up by some producers. That's when he created Plantation Days. And that was a whirlwind show, box or standing room only. Sales went through the roof to the point where Sir Alfred Butt came over from England and brought them over to perform at the Empire Theater in London. And Queen Mary brought the Royals to the show because Plantation Days, my grandfather's all-colored show, was sandwiched between a white show called The Rainbow. And one of the girls that was dancing in The Rainbow, her father was Queen Mary's wardrobe, and King, King Henry's wardrobe supervisor. So she brought all the, war, all, all the royals to see The Rainbow, but when they saw rhythm, when they saw Plantation, and they saw the rhythm in Plantation, they, they loved it. They loved and they supported my grandfather. But the fact that Queen Mary and the Royals loved it gave them some sort of prominence. And when they came back to America, 
they were smack dab in the middle of the Harlem Renaissance. And that's when he got his apartment, Duke Ellington and Edna Ellington moved in. He got his main job at Connie's End, and things started popping. It wasn't all good. There were, you know, like the Cotton Club was very racist. The, Lena Horne and all the other black performers, including Duke Ellington, if they wanted to go to the bathroom, they would have to relieve themselves on the sidewalk with a paper bag. They wouldn't let them use the toilet facilities. That's how prejudiced the people that managed and owned the Cotton Club were. Connie Zinn was less racist. They gave my grandfather a lot of more artistic freedom. But it was like a lot of the white, haughty, porty, rich people from Park Avenue that were coming with their Duesenbergs and their limousines up to Harlem. And they did not like or appreciate having to rub up against dark-skinned black people. And they made complaints because the people's skin was too dark. So that's why my grandfather was forced into getting rid of the dark-skinned dancers and hiring light-skinned, near-white-looking dancers. Towards the end of his life, he uh, became like the first black casting director for 20th Century Fox. And um, they did that because they had a lot of pressure in the portrayal of blacks because the portrayal in those old movies was terrible. They were butlers, they were uh, idiot oafs, or they were black people that were scared of ghosts. Hi, Mr. Summers, uh, this is your room. Mr. McCarthy's, your quarters are joined. Excuse me, Mr. Doctor, but didn't you forget something? I think not. No? No. Uh, what about me? You will be taken care of. That's what I'm afraid of. In the seven's quarters. Mumbo will show you the way. Mumbo? So there was a lot of protest by a lot of the, uh, in the by the NAACP and uh, different organizations, and a lot of the c celebrities tried to make a difference. The Busby Berkeley people, that the, the chorus line, came to my grandfather to learn how to dance. My grandfather's black chorus girls would go see Busby Berkeley movies and laugh at it because they knew that my grandfather could do 100% better. But because he was black and seal skin, they wouldn't take him out to Hollywood. It hurt him, but he had to just keep on going because he didn't have a choice. If my grandfather wasn't a producer director, which his talents brought him to, what was he going to be? He was going to be a Pullman court porter or cleaning toilets in the Hotel Teresa. The, the, the strong through line between my grandfather's life and his, was his work. He lived for his work and he lived for audience applause. When he stopped getting audience applause towards the end of his life, that's when he expired and died of a heart attack while he was directing a review at Maroon, Maroon Rand's nightclub on 132nd Street and 7th Avenue. And his form of entertainment was getting out of style. People were, he was working at the Apollo, people were booing his shows because they didn't want to see the comedians, they didn't want to see the chorus line anymore, they didn't want to see the puppets, they didn't want to see the, the uh, fortune tellers. What they wanted to see was Count Basie. As a, they just wanted to see Count Basie by himself. They wanted to see Duke Ellington by himself. My grandfather's chorus line at the same time joined the union and they demanded higher wages because these ladies were getting older. Their heydays were during the Cotton Club and Connie's end days and they were trying to take care of themselves and they joined the union and Frank Schiffman didn't want to pay them the money. So what happened was my grandfather was redlined into small Harlem nightclubs where he continued to do his floor show reviews and his colored mu musical comedies, but he didn't have the same stars. My grandfather's legacy was that he was the inventor of the Uptown nightclub floor show review. And he was one of the greatest colored musical comedy stages ever. And without him, we would not have what is on Broadway today. And those are not my words. Those are words from other historians. As Leonard Harper's grandson, I championed and pushed for Leonard Harper way. Uh, Grant Harper Reed. Thank you, Mayor de Blasio and uh, my councilwoman, Inez Dinkins for this honor of uh, honoring my grandfather, Leonard Harper, with Leonard Harper Way. Because I felt that his legacy should be known. On between 131st and 132nd Street was where Ain't Misbehaving in Black and Blue and Connie Zinn was. And it was also Rum Boogie where he worked. The, it, the, the clubs changed hands later on in, in life. 
Uh, but Connie's Inn was his main place and it was there and the Lafayette Theater was there. Those were his places. And I felt that as a, because of what he did and where he died, he died on that corner at Moraine's doing a show that it's appropriate for the street to be named Lennon Harper Way. The, the main thing that I could get to try to get to people is Harlem is changing, it's being gentrified. Other people are defining us. They don't know anything about the old Harlem. And it's up to certain individuals to try to define our history and not let others define our history. And I'm doing that in my own little way with this book because I show the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't, it's not Harlem, every day happy, you know, la di da, everybody's happy, Negroes trying to get tips from the white people that are coming up, the rich white people. It, it wasn't about that. There was the good, the bad. I show the pain and the pleasure in my book, Rhythm for Sale. So th that the street is Leonard Harper Way, I'm hoping that people will walk by and say, Leonard Harper, who's he? And then go Google it and then find Rhythm for Sale, my book, or find some information about him and be inspired to write about their relatives or their friends or the people that they knew and interacted with in Harlem before they died, and then everything would be like Bozo the Clown. <laughs>